Well, hello everyone. This is Al Fadi, and I'm so excited uh, today because we are launching yet another brand new video series. Myself and Dr. J, who is with me here in studio, and you know, the minute you mention Dr. J, of course, we are becoming more and more familiar now with the historical criticism of Islam, and today's video series that we are launching is no exception. We're talking about Mecca. We've talked in the past about Petra, we talked about the Qibla, we talked about other aspects of the traditional narrative of Islam. Today, we're revisiting Mecca yet again, and we're titling this Mecca in Search of a Place. And there are five different areas that throughout this particular video series that we will be addressing. When I say we, myself, and Dr. J, who is also here with me in studio, the first area is what we call the Muslims' claims about Mecca. That's the traditional view. We're going to talk about the historical problems with that traditional view about Mecca, the geographical problems, and most likely we'll address uh, the amazing work of Dan Gibson, for instance, in the book that he also called, uh, you know, uh, uh, something to that extent related to the geogra geography of the Quran. And then we're going to deal with the issue of Mecca's historical claims that has been debunked. And Finally, before we conclude, we're going to talk about Mecca's origins, putting it all together. In other words, when this city possibly originated, at what time, and it's, of course, I want you to pay attention to the fact that Dr. J will always focus on timeline. That's important. Timeline. What do we mean by that? You hear something that is being said that it existed at a certain time, but facts actually show that this particular location, document, happen to originate or be developed at a later time. That in and of itself should be problematic to any Muslim. Mecca is no exception. And we will close this series with our final conclusions based on everything that we have shared with you. So hopefully everyone will be enjoying this series as you've been enjoying all of the other uh, series that we've done together. With that in mind, Dr. J, thank you so much as always for being here with us and for really taking time uh, to do the research and come here to unpack it together. Well, listen, thanks for having me on. I'm wearing the same shirt, the same vest that I wore in the in the last uh, uh, episodes that we did, the last series. And that's intentional, you know, because you want it to look like a continuation of that. Exactly. Now, what I want to do, remember in the past, you and I have talked about the book and the man, the book and the man. That's the right. The man. That's the phrase. Uh, it, it's what I've been saying for years and years and years. You always have to go back to the book. You always have to go to the man. We've done an entire series on, on the book, the Kira'at and the manuscripts. We were yet to do the manuscripts. That's yet to come. But look how popular they've been, both on your site, Sita International, and on my site. And then the man, Muhammad, looking and seeing how Islam really began. We did that in just the last few months, and I think you've broken all records. You have uh, probably the most views of any series so That's far correct. just on the man. Well, see, the book of the man is great, but there's one thing missing, the place. The book of the man, the place. We need to go to the next step because the book of the man will keep coming back to. And in fact, we'll be doing other episodes that un that, that really build on the book of the man. Whenever we're doing the book, I wear a brown shirt. Whenever we're doing the man, I wear a black shirt, or sometimes I wear a blue shirt. Uh, but I sh color code my shirts depending on what the subject is. Now, for the for the uh, place, we're going to talk about something that's even more exciting because where is the book of the man? We don't find anything. We just can't find any book. We can't find any man in the seventh century. The place, however, we can. Right. And the place itself, Mecca, it's the place. It's the center of history. It's the beginning of history. It's where Adam and Eve were sent to. It's where all the prophets lived. It's where Abraham lived and built, rebuilt the Kaaba. It's where Ishmael lived. We're going to find all these claims that the Muslims are making all center on one place. And see, you know it because you've been there, haven't you? Absolutely, many times. In fact, you used to go there. I, I thought it was fascinating. In one of our last episodes, uh, you were talking about how you used to go down there for a lark. You used to get out and get the guys, you and your friends used to get in the car, and you drive to Mecca and you go to the Kaaba. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll go there. We'll pray. And sometimes we'll even try to make it to where we can go and eat. They have, like, one of the most amazing, most delicious dish called fool, and we love that, you know. So we'll go there and we'll eat after or before, you know. So, so yeah, I mean, it was a drive away, I mean, for me, 45 minutes to an hour. I mean, what's that? You do it any time. 
I mean, it's, it's lovely. It's lovely to be able to speak to someone who actually understands everything I'm saying, who's been to where I've never been. I've only read about it. I've only heard about it. I've never been there. And you've been there. You grew up real close to it, just down the road from it. You jump in a car, you're there in 45 minutes. So we're going to talk about this place. We're going to talk about Jeddah. We're going to talk about your city. We're going to talk about Mecca, which is just not too far away. And we're going to ask some historical questions about these places uh, that no one's dared to ask before. And we're gonna introduce some brand new material that's not come up before. And this is why, in some ways, this is, I'm licking my lips because this is probably gonna be one of the most exciting topics. Because this is a place that just runs and runs and runs and runs. You can walk away from the book, you can walk away from the man and say, there's no way we could ever discover Muhammad because he's just one man. There's no way we can discover the book because they've been lost. But you can't say this about Mecca. You can't say about Mecca. Because the claims they make for Mecca go way beyond just one man in one book. The claims they make from, from me, uh, Mecca are enormous. So let's let's get right into their claims. Yeah. You want to do that? Yeah. Let's uh, go to the slides then and let's look and see what their claims are. Now, according to every Muslim, Muhammad has been the last and greatest prophet. There it is right there, number one. Number two, the Quran was his revelation sent down only to him and is the final and greatest revelation. That's right. No one would uh, say any different to that. So there's the man and there's the book. And then, of course, number three, Mecca was his city. Yep. Has always that's, been a city. That's, that's where he lived place, from 570 right to 622. So uh, for the first 52 years, that's where he lived, right? Right. According to what the tradition taught. Now, this is all according to the Islamic traditions. This is the claims that the standard Islamic narrative said. S-I-N. Mecca was a city considered by Muslims as the oldest hist in history. Why? Because that's where Adam and Eve. Yes, you can't get any earlier than Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if Adam and Eve were there, that means it's the first inhabitant, it's the first place, it's the first place where any humans lived, Mecca, because they were thrown down there when, of course, they were up in the Garden of Eden, up in space, they were thrown down there in chapter uh, 7, verse 24, it says, it talks about that. So therefore, Islam is the final religion based on Muhammad's life and sayings, the Sunnah, and on the Quran's teaching. That, I don't think anybody disputes. That's right. That's their claims. Uh, but the conclusion is, well, if you take those claims, and the conclusion is that Islam is completely dependent on those three. They're com completely dependent on the Quran, the book, that's the book. They're completely mm -hmm. dependent on Muhammad, that's the man. Quran. And they're completely dependent on Mecca, that's the place, the book, the man, the place. So, shouldn't we investigate both the Quran and Muhammad and Mecca to see if indeed Muslims are correct? However, before we, we already done that with the Book of the Man, let's now look and see just how important Mecca really was or really is. So let's dive into it. Absolutely. And again, we want to clarify for anyone who just joined in, when you see the acronym, not the term SIN, acronym S-I-N stands for basically Standard Islamic Narrative. That's what it stands for. So in the next episode, what I like to do is look at how important this place is because it's not me saying it, it's not you saying it, it's what the traditions have said, the standard Islamic narratives have said about this place. We need to see what they're saying first before we can even try to discover whether or not what they're saying is correct. Excellent. So uh, with that in mind, maybe we'll wrap it up here mm -hmm. and we will pick it up next time so that we can talk about the importance of Mecca and that's, of course, uh, most likely we're going to start with the Islamic tradition and a narrative related to that particular town. As I grow up learning, of course, about it and how important it was, even the Quran actually makes an allusion to that importance in some of the early Quranic passages. With that in mind, thank you, of course, brother. And hopefully everyone will be waiting with excitement, really, uh, about next episode but also we hope that you will take this series as always share it with others share it with your muslim friends uh, the intent here is not to debate them and yell at them and scream at them or argue with them the intent is to use it hopefully to open a door for a dialogue remember the bible went through it uh, Jesus's birth and his uh, life went through it his crucifixion and the historicity of that went through it even jerusalem uh, sometimes goes through all of that and many other aspects of our faith. We should welcome that simply because the evidence usually will support everything that the Bible have said altogether. Is that the story when it comes to Islam, its origin, its book, its man, and today its place? We will see that throughout this series. Thank you, everyone. This is Al-Fadi. 
God bless you.